This program is brought to you by friends and partners of Shaiju Matthew and Revive Nations. How do you be stable in life? How do you receive a blessing? You have to have a fixed heart. It is not because the temptations are not calling you. It is not because distractions are not everywhere. But my heart is fixed because I'm done playing games. Have a little one that you desire to see grow in the things of God? Subscribe to Revive Nations Kids on YouTube for an exciting array of programs every week. ReviveNations.tv is now open to live participation to our services. Today, the word that I want to bring to you will be of great help. If you will open your Bibles to the book of Psalm, chapter 108. Okay, verse 1. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Okay? I want you to read it after me. One, two, three, go. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Okay, one more time. Oh God, my heart is fixed. One more time, a little louder. Oh God, oh God. my heart, my heart is, fixed. is fixed. Oh God, my heart is fixed. This is a very powerful scripture. Now, if you didn't listen to last week's sermon, please take time to listen to it on our Shaiju Matthew app. It's probably one of the most critical sermons that I've preached. Okay, And I talked to you about a secret of the life of Job. Do you remember? Okay, and I said about how Job created a lifestyle that could not be penetrated by Satan. A lifestyle that could not be penetrated by Satan. Where Satan would come to God and say, I can't do anything about this guy because you have created a hedge around him. You have created a fence around him. Because of whatever he has done, and I went on to explain to you what he did and how he covered his children and how he even covered the possibility of an area where they could have gone wrong. So I hope uh, you take time to listen to that. So because what I'm going to share today is an overflow of that. Okay, so now if there is one such thing where you can protect yourself from where Satan cannot enter. We want to probe that a bit more. Is that of interest to you? Yes. Where we can create an effective hedge where Satan cannot enter into our lives, into our homes, into our children. I believe in total victory. I, I don't believe in 80% breakthrough. I believe in 100% breakthrough. I don't believe in little health i believe in total health i don't believe in little wealth i believe in total wealth in short i believe dominion that is still possible today but it's very important for us to be people of principles to be people of principles because the kingdom of god the church today is not living its full potential. The kingdom today is not living full potential. And there's part of us that has become so familiar with a certain lifestyle that we are not provoked to greatness. So what happens is you, you live in a 
Christian family for an extended period of time. You live in a church setting for an extended period of time. You have a certain spirituality that you are exposed to a certain period of time. And then there is a familiarity that comes with it where you don't demand more from God. It feels it feels like we pray prayers. We pray prayers and when we don't find results, we don't provoke God beyond that. And we start beginning to have certain theologies that warms us up, that make us feel good. The the kind of theology that says be content with where you are. So it's easier for somebody to say don't contend for more because you're already blessed. It's easier for you to look at somebody and say look you have a car that at least runs. So why are you praying that your car should not give you trouble? It's just a little engine trouble. That's okay. But at least you have a car that runs. It's we have downgraded our expectations so much so much we've downgraded our expectations so much because we have seen so less results but i've committed myself to pursue this god of our fathers to pursue this god of abraham pursue this god of isaac and pursue this god of jacob pursue this god of moses and pursue this god of elijah and this jesus who is the beginning and the end we want to be believers that are an example of how we can do better we want to be the kind of believers that is an example of what christian life should look like that pursuit takes us to look at details of what god responds to the details that god respond to the details that makes us great the details that we have ignored the details that we have been in the church too long and then we have become familiar with we have to look at those details okay so this is a psalm of david a broken man like us okay a broken man like us that david that not only committed an adultery he he created a scenario to murder someone to facilitate his desire I think that's where we we are a little better than him. Yeah. We have not killed anyone to facilitate what we want. He's like I'm going to do whatever it takes to feed my desire. And then you see how the Lord rebukes him. He sends him a man. He sends him a prophet. Okay? He sends him Nathan to rebuke him. Oh, rebuke him. You've given cause for Gentiles, for other people to look down on the name of the Lord. This is the heart of God. This is the heart of God. And and here is David immediately he begins to cry. and we before the lord he immediately repents now this is a contrast between him and king saul because king saul when he found that he was in sin when you talk about sin it does not necessarily mean you kill someone it could simply mean that you miss the mark okay lack of prayer is you missing the mark so when Saul noted located and found that he had missed the mark you will see something that happens he wants to cover it up he doesn't want to repent 
he doesn't want to go to god and say god i messed up forgive me i need your favor instead he sought the favor of man he said what will people think about it he said cover up this sin so that people may not misjudge me so there's a huge contrast david didn't care about what people thought about his sin he said like, yeah you want to call me an adulterer go ahead you if you think i'm a murderer go ahead no problem i don't care about your opinion why because david grew up all his life being bullied by his brothers all his life being made fun of by his brothers insulted by never been accepted by society so he's like you know anyways the society is going to think what they want to think i don't care about your opinion the opinion that i really care about is one guy one person one source the opinion that i care about is what god thinks about me that's david's heart but king saul he doesn't care about what god thinks ah that i can go to god and say sorry lord i won't do it again boom we move on and saul cared about people's opinion so he comes to prophet samuel and say can you come and stand with me so that people will see that you're still with me in other words he's saying the presence of god is not with me but i want it to look like the presence of god is with me so if i can get the prophet to stand beside me it will look like god is still with me what is that that is religion religion is you have a look it looks like god is with you but <laughs> it's been very long you don't even know how his voice looks like you it's been very long you haven't felt his presence very long he has not spoken to you very long you've not heard his voice yet you want to pretend like you hear his voice there are many people that are still in the church today they are in the church they have the face of religion hey if you ask them they will never miss the service I remember talking to this guy he said oh pastor shot you 30 years i've never missed a sunday service come covid <laughs> ah covid was god's testing machine eh wanted to see who the real believers are 30 years his his pride was his streak that is never missed there are people that are in the church that are it looks like they are so close to god because they've done things right but yet there are some people that have not even been to church but they have been real with god some of my young people today that have been turned off by church but somewhere in their heart there's a part of their heart that is still beating for the lord that's still left alive and i'm praying that that part will quickly respond to the lord because god is still about to do something god is about to do something for you if you can just find that little part that beats for him more than anybody else and that's what god is looking for and you know what's the scary part about being in the church for so long is that you don't even know that you're part of religion you are so faithful but there is no more fire and you're okay with it you're so faithful in what you're doing that you can't even tell that you have now enabled religion and you can't tell it because you're part of it until god sends somebody outside your perspective and start showing you that now you're part of religion that's when people get offended that's when because because you thought you were doing well until rock the boat ministries came to town david is saying i'm 
fed up messing up with my life there must be a part of you that is fed up of a mediocre and say i need to have more there must be more than this i want you to practice it can you say it out there must be more than this there must be more than this your your spirit has to begin to start earning saying there must be more than this so you're looking at david that's tired of messing up he got what he want at all cost he got what he want but now when he got what he want he realized what he want was not what he really want see that's a scary thing about god that i have noticed i should give you guys this tip i've noticed that when you really stubborn about something with god he'll give you what he wants i've seen that happen so many times young people say oh i have to marry him he's an angel ay 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 okay all right and then god doesn't stop them that's the most scariest part about this wonderful god we have he will never force people to love him he will never force people to obey him you hear what i'm saying and then he will give you what you have been stubborn about god forbid that day comes i want you to say this after me dear lord don't give me what i want give me what you think is best for me is the most powerful prayer that you can pray and the most powerful prayers that you can pray is god don't listen to my prayers did you hear me and the most powerful prayers you can say is don't not my will but your ah that's the prayer of jesus he prayed everything and then he said but not my will <laughs> That's the one thing we don't like praying. We want what we want. But what if I told you this what God wants for you is greater than what you want. You are so fascinated by that one thing. But what if I told you that your biggest dream your biggest greatest idea, your greatest thought is still nothing. The Bible says his thoughts are higher than our thoughts so in your relationship with god you have to mature okay i'm not talking about religion now in your walk with in your personal walk with god the personal work is when your nobody else is watching when just between you and god you have to tell god lord i really 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 want this but you know what you know better you know better it's going to hurt me if you don't give me this But guess what even at at the risk of hurting me don't give me this if this is not good for me So what David is saying is that I am done messing up okay So today I want uh, some Davids that are listening to me to begin to say the same thing I want some Davids watching far whichever country you are in i want you to begin to declare i am done being in this level ai the presence of god is increasing i don't know if you can feel it so basa what does david say my heart is fixed my heart is what fixed there is a moment where you you have to come and say i am done with my heart being there here and everywhere my heart is fixed i'm done playing games my heart is fixed i have tried the world but i know nothing good there my heart is now fixed i have tasted the sin but i see there's only pain associated with my sin my heart is now fixed you need to come to a place before god can bless you hear me church and hear me well before god can bless you you need to come to a place where your heart is now fixed unshakable say so fix your heart even even online you can you can either turn to your neighbor and say fix your heart fix fixed heart the secret 
to God's blessing is a fixed heart. Secret to God's blessing is a fixed heart. James chapter 1 says, if you are double minded, you are like a wave that is tossed in the wind. So in life, how do you be stable? In life, how do you receive a blessing? You have to have a fixed heart. I have desires here, I have attractions there, I have temptations there, but it doesn't matter. My heart is fixed. I know that this is the only thing that is stable and that is the presence of God. It is not because the temptations are not calling me. It is not because distractions are not everywhere, but my heart is fixed because I'm done playing games. I'm done playing games. I don't know about you. I feel like I'm growing old. Maybe you guys don't have that problem, but I do. You have to make up your mind. This is my heart is fixed. If my heart is fixed, I will not be tossed by the waves. If my heart is fixed, I will not be tossed around by the waves of life. Now it does not mean that the waves of life will not come, but I will not be tossed around. Okay? This is something that you have to understand. You don't want to go to the extreme of saying, "Oh, Jesus loves you. Don't worry, everything will be all right." No, 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 no. No, no, no. Who said everything will be all right? If everything is all right, that means you're doing something wrong. The fact that everything is all right is a fact that the devil doesn't have a problem with you. When you are walking with God, your winds will come against you. Winds will come against you. But that's how you know you're doing something right. You're doing something right. Now you get to practice what the Bible says. You will not be tossed in the winds. Let me show you another verse. Go to Psalms 125. Okay? This is one of my favorites. Psalm 125 verse 1, 2 and 3. I want you to claim these three verses today. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion which cannot be <laughs> removed it's not which which will not be removed it's not saying which will not be removed which cannot be removed eesh did you hear that you are like mount zion which cannot go down you cannot be removed ah those at home maybe you can declare this right now i cannot be removed yeah 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 yes but abides for ever as the mountains are round about jerusalem so the lord is round about his people henceforth even for ever every blessing that comes to you is an ever blessing for ever blessing they that trust in the lord if you trust in the lord you are like a mount zion that cannot be removed but abides forever as mountains are round about jerusalem the lord is round about his people so if you trust in the lord number 1 you become a mountain that cannot be removed number 2 you have the lord round about you number 3 for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of righteous so number 1 you will be a mountain that cannot be removed number 2 you are going to be surrounded by the lord number 3 the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest the righteous put forth their hands into iniquity in other words the wicked will not have victory over you they'll come against you they will fight you they will try to do things but they will not have victory over you provided your trust is in the lord 
provided your heart is fixed. Fixed heart. If your heart is fixed, three things that has to happen to you. Number one, Mount Zion shall not be removed. Number two, surrounded by God. Number three, wicked shall not have victory. Wicked will not have victory. Hello, hello. Welcome to Revive Nations with Shaiju Matthew. We are so glad that you could join us today. I know that you have been elevated by the Lord through this word that you just heard. And I believe in the days to come, we are going to hear about the Lord's hand that is upon your life. And we are looking forward to celebrating with you. If you haven't already, would you take a minute and join us on your favorite social media platforms? Follow, comment, share and subscribe with your friends and families. If you desire to support our ministry, you can do so by visiting www.revivenations.org slash give. Your generosity helps us to reach someone new around the world every day. So may the Lord see it and bless you. Until next time, God bless you and Shalom. Many of us love Jesus by our words, Facebook posts and scripture quotes. But when God wanted to show us how much He loved us, He gave up His only begotten Son. He is not looking for part-time Christians, nor a portion of surrender or a fraction of obedience. He is waiting for us to empty ourselves. He is not asking us for some things. He is asking us for everything. And Jesus is the only person who has the right to ask us for everything because He gave us everything. Distance is not a barrier to God. RevivedNations.tv is now open to live participation to our services. 